Amplitude fades can be used to increase or decrease the amplitude of a signal in a relatively slow and controlled manner, rather than having the amplitude change abruptly. Audio engineers will use fades and apply them in many cases to the beginning and end of their signals. But a fade can also be used just to transition from one gain value to another gain value. We're going to look at a couple different types of fades. The first is the linear fade, and we'll also look at the exponential fade. The way that this will work is we're going to create an array that will contain the values of how we want to scale the amplitude of our signal over time. Then we'll use element-wise multiplication to apply that array to the part of our signal that we want to change. So let's go ahead and look at writing some computer code to perform amplitude fades. Here I'm going to demonstrate the process of creating and applying amplitude fades to audio signals. This will be accomplished by using element-wise multiplication. I'm going to demonstrate both the linear fade and also the quadratic fade. Let's start out by initializing some parameters that we're going to use with our audio signals. This will include our sampling rate of 48,000 hertz. Then we're going to synthesize a test input signal or generate a signal here. We'll say that the number of samples in our signal is equal to our sampling rate times one. We're just going to have a one second long signal. That'll be plenty to work with. Now, as our input signal, why don't we generate some white noise? And we'll use some white noise here as our input. So in this case, we're going to create an array called noise by using the function rand n. What that's going to do here, we need to put in the number of samples, comma 1. That'll give us a column array of white noise. Then, for good measure, so that this will fit within the bounds of minus 1 to 1, let's scale the amplitude by 0.2. That should be plenty. Now, let's go ahead and plot the signal that we've synthesized. So you can look at what we're working with. So here's our test input signal. Now what we're going to do is create different types of fades. I'll start out by creating a linear input fade. So that's going to ramp the amplitude of the noise starting at zero up to the maximum value over here. So the way that this works is at the beginning, we want to start out by multiplying the amplitude of the noise by zero. And by the end, we want to multiply the amplitude of the noise by one. If you multiply it by zero, we'll end up with a result of zero. If we multiply it by one here, then that will take on the val whatever value the signal has. And in between, we're going to do an incremental increase in the amplitude of the signal. So let's go back here. Let's create a linear fade in. So here I'm going to create an array called lin fade in. This is going to be an array or a signal here. And I'm going to use a function called lin space. This is one built into MATLAB, allows you to put in two numbers. I'm going to put in zero comma one, and then also the number of samples. And the way that this will work is it will create an array that starts with the value of zero and ends with the value of one, and the length of that array will be the number of samples. So now we'll create this variable here, which will have an array that has the same exact dimensions as our noise here. The one other thing we need to do is transpose. This comes as a horizontal array, and we need to turn it into a vertical array. So I'm just going to use this command we've used before to make it vertical. All right now, why don't we go ahead and plot our linear fade in and look at what we're working with. So here is our array. It has 48,000 samples. It starts with a value of zero and it ends with a value of one. Now we can multiply this signal using element wise multiplication to our signal. Here, I'm going to use a loop, conditional or a control structure, in order to accomplish this. So we're going to go sample by sample, and we'll explicitly do the element-wise processing. Start first sample all the way up to 
the length of our linear fade. Put an end. What we'll do here is index and create an output signal. We'll go sample by sample. By multiplying here our noise signal, sample comma one, multiplied by our linear fade signal. Also index this one. In this case, what we're doing is we're actually just multiplying individual numbers at a time. We're not multiplying arrays. We are indexing the array to get out an individual number and multiplying it. In this case, it's not necessary for us to put the point before the multiplier here because we're not doing array multiplication. Another thing that's good idea here when working with loops is I'm going to initialize our output signal here to have the same uh, elements to begin with as our noise signal. So the way this will work is we initially assign all these values to our output so it has the same exact dimensions, but then we're going to go back through and scale the uh, amplitude of the appropriate ones to match the linear fade and then assign it to the output. This, all, this command that I'm putting in here will also be helpful when we move forward from there. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot now our output signal and look at the result. So now what we've done is we've created a fade. We're scaling the amplitude starting here at zero. We're increasing up to 48,000, the last sample here, where we uh, allow the noise to go through without being changed. I'll show you a quick way that what we can do is change this to a linear fade out. So I'll copy these commands, put them here, and change this to linear fade out. Rename this variable, linear fade out. We need to transpose it. Okay, in this case, I can comment out because these because we're not going to use them. All right, now let's look at the result when we uh, are using our linear fade out. First thing I need to do though is actually switch these numbers. The, this array starts at zero and goes up to one. Instead, let's start at one and go down to zero. Still the same number of samples, but in this case, it's going to be decreasing rather than increasing. So now the amplitude starts at its maximum value here, and then we're going to attenuate it all the way down to zero here at the end. The next thing I'll demonstrate is how we can create a fade out or fade in that is a different length than our input signal. So as of right now, the fade takes the entire time. Let's say we just wanted to have a fade in that lasted for half the time. So here, let me uh, comment these out go back to our linear fade in. All right, in this case, we've created our fade to be the exact same length as our white noise. What if we want it to be half that length? What I'm gonna do here is put in number of samples divided by two, but really we could put in however many numbers of samples that we wanted for the uh, fade in to occur. So now what happens is we're gonna come down here and use it in our loop. This is why it's helpful for us to initialize the output because the way that it works is we start out by uh, assigning all the values of the noise to the output, but then we're going to go back through and just for the length of the linear fade in, just for the first you know, 24,000 samples, we're going to scale the amplitude, but then this array still has the rest of the values for the end of it. So let's run this script and look at the result. Great, so now we have the fade in occurring for the first half of the signal, and then the amplitude remains constant for the end. So what you have to do is be good at indexing the arrays to figure out which samples that you want to uh, change the amplitude of and which samples you don't. All right, let's move on and look at how to create a quadratic fade. Let me comment these out. Let's come down here and look at create a quadratic fade in. So here we're gonna borrow the code that we worked with before. Here's our lens space. 
quad fade in. I'm going to put in the lens space here, but I'm going to uh, also process it. So as of right now, it's going to do linear spacing from zero up to one. So we're going to take this array, we're going to raise it to the power of two. Then we're going to perform the same kind of transposition. So now it's a column array. Then come down here to our code and switch these to quad. Fade in and half the uh, length is plenty. So let's run this script and look at our result. So now what we're creating is one that has a concave fade in. So in this case, it's not linear, but rather it's going to fade in like this. Another thing that you could do is change this exponent now to be one divided by two. Run the script again and look at the result. And now it's going to be convex. So it's your choice as a programmer or as an audio engineer, what kind of fade you like to accomplish, whether it's going to ramp on very quickly or in a linear fashion or ramp on much more slowly. So I'll switch this back here, raise to the power of two. We can look at the result, compare. Each will give, accomplish a different sort of sound. So those are a couple different ways that I've demonstrated now on how to create different types of amplitude fades.